Wow. So you were in the driver's seat. That is the good news, right? I heard we are not trying to scare you. We are trying to prepare you. That's why you got up this morning, right? Um, and dedication. Working hard for what it is that uh, you want to achieve. Key things. I always say that uh, when I'm interviewing someone, it's that we hire people for what they've done and we oftentimes fire them or let them go for who they are. If you think about that, your resume says what you've done, how fast you can type, what programs you can use, but your resume doesn't say anything about your integrity. When you will say yes, when you should say no. So with that in mind, I want to bring our uh, next speaker up. His name is uh, Mr. Fred Moore. And Mr. Moore is a Ronald E. McNair scholar and he attended the University of North Dakota. He was recruited to the fashion grad program at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And after spending time in Europe to apprentice in a Moden salon, anybody know what a Moden salon is? <laughs> it's a fashion house. Mr. Moore concentrated on a freelance fashion photographer's life which eventually led him into a space where he made clothing for a number of celebrities. Eventually, Mr. Moore was trained in the art of facilitation and has facilitated businessmen and women, students, ex-offenders, male and female, and various other community groups. Trained by the Pacific Institute of Seattle in Seattle, Washington, Mr. Moore and his team deliver a program called Expand and Explode. Mr. Moore's work can be seen on various websites and as a master facilitator, he's responsible for the delivery of several very important workshops now offered to local high schools. Mr. Moore can be found in the local Urban League of San Diego County, where he is also um, an instructor and the project manager for the Urban League's new project called Project Ready Youth Program. Project Ready prepares youth for college and beyond for their university and work. Mr. Moore believes that if we as people survive and prevail, it will be because we have taught our children well. So with that, I welcome to the front right now, Mr. Fred Moore. Good morning. As I heard that, uh, that introduction, I was thinking to myself, who is that? Some time in Europe, uh, had to start someplace, so that means mothers, fathers, foster homes, I'm thinking, who is that? Because every day, every day of our lives, we change. Is there anybody in here that doesn't believe we are constantly changing? This is gonna be real interactive, so you're gonna to have to get on it. Is there anyone here that does not believe that we're changing constantly? You don't believe we're changing constantly? Okay, so everybody's on that. Are you different as a result of listening to this outstanding speaker who spoke before me? Are you different as a result of listening to that? How are you different? You are who? Giovanni Dorsel. Giovanni, tell us how you're different. I'm reminded and motivated that I would like to be a servant of the people and remain optimistic to help put smiles on other people's faces. Thank you. After hearing that outstanding speech, who else is different? Who else is different? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Are you different as a result of hearing the outstanding speech that came before me? Yes. Tell me how. I'm Ashley Canty, and just reminded that we do need to serve the people, like Giovanni said. Very good. As your commentator told you, I'm a part of something called Expand and Explode. 
Expand and Explode is an opportunity for people after they get information, after they hear outstanding speakers, to step up to the plate and use that information right away. Four years of college, six years maybe working as an athlete, maybe working as a doctor, and maybe you're working on research in cancer, maybe you're working on research in telecommunications. If you take too much time with the information that you have, your opportunity will do what? Pass you by. So with Expand and Explode, we give you an opportunity with a skill set we lay in front of you to pick up what you have and go with it right away. I see someone in the audience who has been a participant in Expand and Explode. I'm sure she didn't think that I would be calling on her this morning, but in a very short period of time, see the guy behind that camera knows me also. That fellow back there with that red shirt on, he knows me too. And he's a part of Expand and Explode. This young lady that I'm going to put the microphone in front of now was a part of a summer project that we took to New Orleans recently. Lena, can you tell these people how Expand and Explode helped you this summer? And it's good to see you. Okay. Um, well, I think the program, it was really great for me because we worked on um, how to Im basically improve education and we made a video and we interviewed our teachers and we really wanted to bring in like, um, instead of kind of thinking about ways that we could do it, we really wanted to make a change. So we went to our teachers, I went to my teacher, I interviewed my teacher and we really wanted to try and help Education by itself, well, we made a video, and then, although I didn't go to New Orleans, um, we went and we presented it in New Orleans for a national competition. And I just think that, personally for me, during the whole project, it helped me grow, and through Mr. Moore's presentations, he really had to bring me out of my shell and make me speak in front of people. And even though I was nervous, I think that I have definitely grown from that, and now it has made me a more confident person, so I think that is a really great program. Thank you, Lena. Now, here's, here's what you need to know about the things that Lena and her friends did. As a result of the documentary that that program put together, our esteemed cameraman has been asked to come back to the National and do the marketing piece for next year's Summer Youth Summit. Expand and explode in practice. Expand and explode in, in practice. I um, have the opportunity of going into the high schools here in San Diego to work with AP students. How many AP students we have here? Okay. What's the importance of doing advanced placement testing? One importance of doing advanced placement testing is making sure you study and you stay on your game and always um, accept any information that your teacher is willing to give you, going the extra mile and making sure that you obtain all and every information as well. Okay. Advantages of doing advanced placement? Um, credits, for, credits for college courses. Okay. Okay. Advanced placement. I think the best way to learn something is to challenge yourself. And I think that's one thing you definitely, one advantage you definitely have for taking an AP test. AP classes. So now my next question, who's getting fours and fives on that AP? Who's getting fours and fives? Because that's the real test. Who's getting fours and fives? <laughs> now, don't feel badly if you're taking AP courses and the fours and fives aren't popping up. Because success is based on a foundation of some what? Some, if you don't win all the time, sometimes you do what? Okay, and you can't stop there. Here's why we are in the high schools working on AP scores. What the high schools are finding is that when our students take the AP classes, they really don't do that well. And what my partner and I found out was that students were trying to memorize the information. Now that's a lot of information not to know. Not to know. So we had a little test that we would do when we went in and spoke with folks. I'm going to share some of it with you. We go in on certain days and I do an examination right on the spot. 
Think about this. Many, many years ago, a young woman, she's about 16 years old, got married. At the age of 20, she set for a very, very famous portrait. That portrait was so famous that it ended up in Paris. So famous that it was in this room in Paris and someone wanted it from another country. So in 1911, someone stole that portrait. Anybody got an idea of what portrait I'm talking about? Mona Lisa. That gives me some idea of how brilliant you are. Because I didn't really say that much. I didn't say that much. But if you've been in school, you have learned that. You didn't memorize that, you learned that. That portrait did not come back to Paris and to the Louvre until 1913. So what I did was a month later, maybe two months later, I came in, and the first thing I said was, 16. And a number of the kids raised their hand and said, that's how old that girl was when she got married. Then I said, then I said 20. They said, that's when she sat for the portrait. Then I said, 1913. They said, that's when the portrait came back. So my question was, how come you know this and all these questions about history you don't know? Because instead of getting fours and fives, you guys are getting ones and twos. What's that all about? They said, Mr. Moore, that was interesting the way you presented that to me. The way you presented the story of the Mona Lisa, it was interesting. As we stand here in front of you and speak about entrepreneurship, speak about your responsibility as young people that are going to step into our places, we want to make sure that what we deliver to you, what we offer to you, what we share with you is interesting enough for you to learn it, not to memorize it, but to learn it. 